this is a part of the Skoda Innovation Week, a lecture or a lecture, a presentation regarding uh, 50 different startups uh, from the region. And it's uh, kind of uh, hard to do this in a good way uh, because uh, whatever you do here uh, in, on, on a topic like this is that it will be highly subjective. Like it's almost Im impossible to say like these are the top 50 ones. So like whatever, whatever you see here, there's probably some missing which should be there. And there's probably some there which might not really fit there. But it's really hard to like say how do you, how do you determine that? Like what's, what's relevant, what's not relevant? So this is kind of my take on it. Uh, and please let me know if something is missing. Uh, I'm from Erison Startup together with Maria uh, and it's a small project which we do part-time uh, to just get like news from the region gathered in English because it's still a big problem that there's a lot of happening in the region but there's very little of it in English which makes it it's almost invisible for expats or for uh, foreign investors and stuff like that so our main mission is just to give uh, like international spotlight on things which happen in the region so that other, others can pick it up and write about it. So that's kind of what we're doing. But it's mostly a hobby project, part-time in that sense. We do otherwise, other, other things uh, in our daily lives. Okay, uh, <coughs> so uh, because it's a highly subjective list, uh, it's really hard to know like how do you determine what's a successful startup or what's a good startup and stuff like that. So one of the things uh, that will be relevant is to talk about funding uh, because the only real, like, it's, there's, there's three different ways of, like, or there's three different good ways of determining how good is a startup. One is how much external funding have they raised, because that's kind, some kind of validation. Somebody believes in this startup. They're on their track to do something, especially when we talk about the numbers, which we talk about here. Uh, so then funding is kind of, kind of a, good, a good measurement. It's not a perfect measurement, but it's a good measurement. Another measurement, measurement would, of course, be uh, revenue. How much money do they actually make? The problem with revenue is that it's hard to get those numbers. It's, it's possible to get them, but then they have probably usually one year lag in, that, in those numbers. And for some startups, uh, revenue is actually not relevant before they're really successful. So it's, like, it's, not, it's not perfect either. So the best measurement to actually determine how successful a startup is would be number of employees, because number of employees actually tells most uh, about how good is it going, because you need, you need to have money from somewhere to have employees. However, that's also not perfect because some startups have a, are a lot more labor intensive, so they have a lot more employees than others. And it's really hard to get those numbers. You don't really, like, you really have to ask every single startup how many employees do you currently have, and that'll change from month to month even. So from, from that perspective, because we come a little bit from the outside, I've used funding as a, like the main indicator of, okay, if they raised more money, we, we, we assume that they're more on track than if they haven't raised money. But it's not, you'll see also there's some exceptions to that as well. But just so you understand how we have, um, how we have thought about it, so mythology. Okay, but before we go into these 50 startups, um, we should also talk a little, a little bit more about funding in general, because funding is, um, uh, like how, how does funding with startups work? And I did a post about this. Um, a while ago, just regarding how this is actually with uh, tech startups in the Nordics, this in this case, and like how much, what, what is, what's typical funding, how large is around, how much equity do you give up, and stuff like that. Uh, I've, you can find that that post uh, on the website. I'll show you where uh, soon. But the interesting thing here is just, just to give some awareness of how it works, is that you usually talk about, here's a, it easily gets a lot of mumbo jumbo here, so that's why I'm showing this, that you get some background information. So you usually talk about things like, like seed investment, or like a pre-seed, or an angel round, or you talk about a series A, or you talk about a series B investment, and stuff like that. And if you don't really know what that is, then it's easily confusing, like what's, what's what, how does, it, how does it work? So this blog post here is a kind of an overview of how it works with numbers, which like this much equity do the founders still have after the third round of investment and stuff like that. So this is kind of uh, detailed. This also was a chart shows like how much do different own, like how much do the founders have, how much do the investors have at certain stages in the company, how much money do we talk about. Uh, and usually, one of the one of the one of the things or one of the jargon is uh, something called series, and often series A or series B. How many here feel that they are familiar with what a series A funding is? Haha, <laughs> good, nobody. Uh, <laughs> 
So when it comes to funding, like uh, we often talk about the series, it's uh, actually don't really I don't really know why it's called Series A, but I I think it was related to some kind of. Uh, in the, it's, it's a lot of this funding is is from the U.S. Uh, like it's inspired by how it's done in the U.S. in the in usually Silicon Valley, and Series A is re, it's called that because there's some form you need to fill in, which is the A form when you do this. So that's why it's called Series A. And then you have Series B, which is a second round. So like usually when you raise money as a startup, you raise money in different rounds. So you raise money, you have that money for maybe one, two years time, and then you have used all that money. And during that time, you raise more money for the next round because you're moving kind of fast in this field. If you're doing something here, you're not always interested in being cash flow positive. You're actually interested in, in, in spending more money than you earn because it's, kind, it's, quite more, it's more important to grow fast. So if you can, you want to raise more money just so that you can grow faster, even if you don't have that much revenue. So that's why one of the reasons why revenue is so hard to talk about with tech startups, uh, because the revenue is quite often not in focus. It's a lot more important with growth. Like how fast can we grow in one way or another? So usually funding works in different series, and once you come, Series A is actually kind of kind of late. Some of the startups we look at today don't have not raised a Series A round. So a Series A round is a couple of million dollars, maybe five million dollars or ten million dollars or something like that. So it's it's can be quite a lot of money in that in that sense. Uh, <laughs> Some of the stars we look at here, they have earlier money investment, or some actually have no investment. And when, with earlier uh, investments, you usually talk about these four terms. So you talk about FFF, which stands for friends, fools, and families. So that's like when you start a company, you convince somebody close to you, either a friend, a fool, or a family member, to give you money. And uh, that's, that's the three Fs. It's not that common in the Nordics because we don't have that many relatives or random people which are kind of too rich. So like it's, it's, it happens, but it's not that usual. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of very common early funding in the Nordics, that's soft money. That's uh, Vinova, for example, or some, like some government which gives you grants, maybe a couple hundred thousand kroner or a million kroner if you write the right applications to start something, to look into something. So that's often called soft money, which often is very good because it doesn't take any equity. You, don't, you, you still own your company completely by yourself. Uh, so that's good. The, the bad thing is that you need to fit into how they want your application to, to look. So you need to like kind of figure out what to write in the right way. You talk about angel investment. Angel investment is all, often early, so it's somebody who's most of the time has had a successful company before, earned money on that, and then decided, wait, it was, I've learned a lot, it was kind of fun to do this, uh, I would love to help more people success uh, or succeed. So that's, then you become an angel investor and you quite often early and invest in very high risk companies in a sense because nobody knows if you do, if you do an early investment, it's very hard to tell if it will be successful or not. I've seen enough companies which sound like completely bogus like, and they go, do, go really well. And I've met a lot of companies which are like the perfect team, the perfect idea, and it just doesn't work. So like, it's really hard to know in, in advance. And then you also talk about seed investment. And seed investment is sometimes done by angel investors or some, sometimes by venture capitalists, by VCs. And it's quite, kind of an early stage for venture capitalist firm. Uh, so it's, a, it's uh, maybe a couple of hundred thousand dollars or something like that, maybe, a, maybe up to a million dollars or something like that. So that's a seed investment. Uh, so it's an early stage investment, usually com combination angel and venture capitalists. So a lot of these, when you do an investment, it, does ne it never has to be from one uh, venture capitalist or from one angel, it can usually be a combination of like two venture capitalist firms investing together or three angels or five angels or in some cases there's even been investment with like 15 angels investing in, in, in one company at the same time. Uh, so it's, there's all kind of variations to this. Okay, so this is just to give you some kind of background and uh, like this is how the basics of funding uh, works and there's there's more on that and as I said it's on the website so you can find that if you go to the website uh, under startups there's how funding works there's like this lengthy article uh, which gives kind of a good overview if you're either working or thinking about it just because it's, it's kind of good to know the mechanics because they kind of affect what's important for the for the board or what's important for the CEO or the founders of the company so it's important to have like that kind of understanding I would say Okay, so that's, uh, that's the background. Uh, we'll talk about startups in this region here. 
Uh, this is an image from the Nordic Tech List, which is a database of uh, a fairly new database of startups in the region. So this is definitely incomplete. We know that. Uh, this is just to give some kind of overview what is here. Uh, so there's kind of quite a lot of like if you look at Skåne, you can and and the Copenhagen region is quite clear that we have four different uh, places where there's most activity in one way or another. It's of course different what's in those activities, how large the companies are, and I'm. I'm, I would assume there's at least 100 missing here uh, because it's probably over 300 in Copenhagen and I would be surprised if it's not. But it's mostly Swedish around this database, so that's why there's more information on the Swedish side than on the Danish side. Uh, but, that, that, but that's just to give some kind of overview. Okay, as I said, 50 uh, startups, it's really hard to get, so it's, it's hard to, show 50, to choose 50 startups in a good way. It's even harder to some kind of rank them. So uh, I, I have not, not even tried to do that. So my excuse is that I, I'll do them in alphabetic order because uh, that's a good, good metric, good sorting mechanism. Uh, but I'll actually do it in different batches. So I'll do the, like the largest first in alphabetic order, then a little bit smaller, or still large, but yeah, not as large and stuff like that. The data I will be using is mostly from Crunchbase. So it's a combination of things we know, because we write a lot about startups, and we know a lot of, a lot of the startups, but also like external available data. Uh, so I will not go too deep into uh, information we, that might not be that public or stuff like that. So it's mostly done uh, with, with Crunchbase. Okay? Good. So then we start. Uh, we start with this, we start with the largest startups. So these are the biggest startups in the region. And also, also when, when we talk about startups like these, it's also kind of, okay, what's, what's, what is a startup? Like how do you, when, when is a startup no longer a startup? That's kind of a, a usual question you get. And there is no real rule. There's actually no good definition of what a startup is. The best commonly used definition of a startup is that it's a company which, the a with, with, which has the aim to grow. Like they're, you're starting something and your ambition is that this should be large, this should grow. That's kind of the startup. So when do you stop being a startup? And we have said there's two ways to stop being a startup. One is that you do a listing at a stock exchange. So you do an IPO, an initial public offering or uh, that you are acquired by somebody else. Apple comes and acquires you or something like that. That's kind of when you stop being a startup. There's also kind of like an age limit. Like, okay, if, you're like, if you've been around for 20 years, you're probably not a startup anymore. But a lot of the startups which are large now maybe started 10 years ago in 2007 or in 2005 or something like that. So there's a lot of startups which are kind of like 10, around 10 years, maybe 12, maybe eight years or something like that. So the larger startups can be quite old in that sense, because it simply takes time to grow. You cannot grow too fast. Okay, so these are the largest ones. Raised more than, uh, okay, I'll, I'll try to use euros, uh, just to be somewhat consistent. So raised more than 50 million euros. Um, okay, alphabetic order. First one, Flatfrog uh, does, uh, and uh, I'll just so you know, 50 startups, we have less than 50 minutes, so you can imagine it's kind of a short time, so we'll probably, we'll only spend a couple of like, a couple of seconds on startups in general, just so you know it. So it'll be a short and consistent list. Flatfrog, which does uh, sensory input, multiple sensory input, mainly for large surfaces, so large computer screens or touch uh, tables, for example, and stuff like that. Based in Lund, raised around, uh, 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 roughly 50 million euros. Been around for quite a long time. Glow, also based in Lund, does LED technology. So this is actually deep tech, as you would say. So this is like nano nanotechnology, uh, like hardcore things. Have been around for a long time, raised a lot of money, a lot of research heavy things uh, in a company like this. In the river, uh, based here in Malmö, uh, which is a PIM system. So it's a project, uh, product information system niche with an e-commerce, like large e-commerce stores need systems like these. Each e-commerce is growing, so it's going very well for them. Based here and in Chicago, you know, somewhere in the US as well, if I remember correctly. Neo Technology, uh, so they raised also quite a lot of money, over, 50, over 80 million. Uh, as you see, there's, a, there's sometimes I'll, I'll put nice stars on things. Not it's semi-based here. Started here, they still have a lot of still have a large office here with development here, but they're actually headquarters in San Francisco. So it's kind of in base in the region, and you'll see that with especially the larger startups. Some of them are not are not headquartered here anymore. Neo Technology does a Neo4j uh, database uh, technology. 
We have Trade Shift, uh, raised over 175 million, uh, also based partly here, partly in uh, London. Uh, and they do a, a business commerce platform. So like technology for making businesses talk, business systems talk to each other in a good way. Uh, Trust Pilot, Copenhagen based, raised over 100 million uh, euros and uh, uh, do on online reviews. Uh, in the, and so making make it easy to find good services online, especially within e-commerce as well. Unity, uh, which just a couple of last week or two weeks ago, uh, announced they raised 400 uh, million dollars. So now they raised over almost 700 million euros they raised so far, which is uh, quite a it's definitely the largest largest startup from that perspective in the region. Also not completely based here anymore, as uh, so they also have a lot of presence in San Francisco and Sil Silicon Valley. Uh, they do a 3D technology platform, so this is actually kind of becoming the standard for all mobile games, or if you do anything in 3D, you kind of use their technology, because it's quite often the easiest things to use. And 3D has kind of taken off with mobile games and with, uh, now with virtual reality, so they're in a very good position. Uh, so that's re they're really impressive, uh, or they're definitely the most impressive startup from the region if, if you you know, want to say it in that way. Okay, so those were the, like the largest ones. Then we have large startups. So these are startups which have raised uh, around 10 million euros or more, or less than 50 million. You could say that. Uh, they, you're, you're usually at that stage, you're usually usually quite a lot of people. So you started to be like 30, 50, maybe up to 100 people and stuff like that. So you like you're coming becoming a company in a in a real sense. <clears throat> okay, Blackwood Seven. First one, uh, digital marketing analysis, raised over 20 million uh, euros. Uh, here's a star as well. That's because I've done, I've put that star on things which have were not on this list one year ago. So this is kind of a new startup in that sense. They've actually been around for quite a while, but I think from a from a technology and from a startup perspective, they're fairly new. So I think the team is experienced, but they have focused recently on doing something which is scalable in a way which hasn't, which, which it wasn't before. Uh, Boost, which is located here in Malmö, uh, which has uh, over over 30 million dollars uh, euros in venture capital as well, and is aiming for a stock listing fairly soon, as far as I understand. And uh, online fashion portal retail e-commerce store, but a lot of the e-commerce now goes more and more into being becoming a platform in one way. Uh, Falcon.io, uh, which does uh, social media management tools. Uh, so they've grown a lot with the growth of, the, of social medias in general, based in Copenhagen. Logpoint, which also is new, uh, which does machine data analyzing uh, and raised 10 million euros recently. Uh, Min Doctor, uh, which is one of those things which probably should have been on this list one year ago, but wasn't, because we don't know everything. We only know things when we find out about them in one way or another. Has recently raised quite a lot of money, so raised over 30 million euros, and based here in uh, Malmö and, and a little bit in Lund as well. Orbital Systems, also here from Malmö, uh, which does the uh, uh, smart showers or showers which are uh, energy, uh, water conservant. Uh, so it's very niche technology as well. Uh, got a lot of attention because they raised, uh, very early they raised money from Niklas Sandström, one of the founders of uh, Skype, which is one of the most known angel investors, or maybe not even angel investor, VCs in, in the Nordics. Plan Day, which does employee scheduling and, ma and management. Uh, based in Copenhagen, raised over f over 15 million euros. Realm, which is not really based in Copenhagen, uh, but has uh, has a lot of Danes which have started it and they're present in, in Copenhagen. Uh, she has a mobile database, so they do a database focused for uh, mobile devices, which kind of is, has different requirements, is a di little bit different uh, in how it is. So that's really interesting because they kind of taken a huge business and just thought, okay, wait, how do we do this actually now in the mobile world? Uh, Sol Voltex, Lund based, uh, they do uh, s solar uh, power related uh, technology. Uh, also, this kind of research heavy, been, a long, been, been around for a long while uh, and raised quite a lot of money just because if you're research heavy and you've been around for a long while, you have spent a lot of money as well. So, uh, uh, it's very, very interesting, very interesting technology in general. Um, Tatudu, which is new uh, on the list as well, which is uh, it's more like it's kind of a marketplace for finding and uh, t tattooers and uh, like a community for people who are into tattoos. 
uh, tattoos, which uh, apparently is a thing, and uh, apparently there's um, a market for that. So that's very interesting. It's grown a lot uh, recent year. And Vivino, which is a community and a way to find out about wine, which also is a thing people care about quite a lot. So especially, uh, they're using really cool technology as well. So they have this uh, app, which you can have, of course, for rating wine, but they also have the technology where you can use, you can download the app, and you can actually just take the camera and point it on the wine list, and it'll tell you which wine is the best uh, on the wine list in the restaurant, and like how many stars they have, and stuff like that. So it's like a really cool way to just find out which wine uh, is good or not. And they're the largest wine community globally. Okay, so those were the, uh, the larger startups. Now we have growing startups. So these are startups which raised around 5 million euros. Uh, they're definitely on track on something, but they of, as with everything else, it takes time. So they still need uh, to continue uh, to grow. Uh, Collego, uh, which is a user portal for services. So like if you, if you want to find a um, handyman or if you want to find some kind of uh, service, uh, then you can go to, that, to them. And they're kind of a marketplace, a portal for that. Uh, driver, uh, which is... Uh, started out uh, out as an as uh, another version of Uber uh, but since then has moved more towards doing the technology so they're kind of a software for uh, taxi companies or for logistics companies and stuff like that so if you like they have like they're they're more the tech and not so much the uh, the, the the brand or the scaling it globally they've taken some different turns during the during their journey uh, Femaphone, which is a um, telephone service for businesses in Denmark. Uh, it's going very well for them. Uh, Collectiva here in Malmö, uh, which is like pension saving uh, portal or pension saving service uh, aimed at being as good for the consumer as possible. So it's a little bit uh, different because there's a lot of strange incentives in that business. So they're using technology focus and, they, and they're being a little bit outside uh, to, to, to try to do something better there. Uh, Mapillary, for also here from, from Malmö, one of those very more famous startups uh, because they're founded by two, two former uh, entrepreneurs who, are, who have done a successful journey. And they do crowdsource street view, which feels like really strange and niche, but this apparently is going very well. They have a lot of images in their database. So it's like they really have a community uh, around Mapillary. And they're, and they're experimenting a lot with computer vision, like image recognition and stuff like that. How do you, how do you get all these images to have interesting data and how, what, what, what can you do with them? Uh, Mintu, which is an uh, online fashion retailer, uh, like other, other people, where other people are also a platform where other people can sell stuff uh, through the service. Uh, Pecan, uh, which is fairly new, it's uh, management tools for corporates, so it's like, uh, uh, yeah, making employees more productive, being better at internal communications and stuff like that. It hasn't been around for long, but also started by a very strong team of former founders. So it's, of course, very promising. And so that's also one of the reasons why they raised already 10 million, even so they haven't been around that long, just because the team is very strong. And if you have a strong team, it's kind of easy, never easy, but easier uh, to convince uh, venture capitalists that you're onto something. Uh, Trial B. Uh, which works with software for the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, so clinical, for example, with clinical trials and stuff like that. So like niche software. Uh, 23, which is an online video portal uh, for also make, like white label on like a white label YouTube in a sense. So like if you're a big corporate and you put out a lot of videos, you can have your own uh, video portal online and they have the technology and everything around that. Also some, a lot of other services regarding, mostly regarding video uh, online. And Saplox in Lund, which does uh, app-based uh, uh, key and uh, lock solutions. Uh, so making, like being able to open doors without having a phys physical key, instead using technology uh, to, to do that. Okay, so that were more than half of the list. We have uh, some left, uh, so, but it will be a little bit quicker, just because otherwise we'll will never be done. So now this like the, the rest, 25 plus more. Uh, and these are growing or promising startups. So these are, have raised, most of them have raised money, not all of them, most of them have raised money, and maybe raised uh, a million euro or something that, 
in that uh, size, or maybe a couple hundred thousand euros, uh, or they have uh, been become cash flow positive, or maybe been cash cash flow po positive the entire way, and like got got somewhere, or they're very interesting for some other reason. So it's this this is like the hardest thing to determine who's on these part of the list or not, because the first 20, that's kind of okay, that's kind of kind of easy. But here it gets uh, very much subjective in that way. And also in alphabetical order, just as last time. So we have Airtame, uh, which does, um, uh, uh, they do wireless presentations, so that you don't need don't need cords like these, so that you, whatever you are, you can have wireless connection to from your computer to a monitor, like a Chromecast or Apple TV, but everywhere, like for every device. Uh, Anyfy Networks, uh, which does uh, smart solutions for networking, uh, for Wi-Fi's, wi to get Wi-Fi solutions, more, more crowd, not crowd-based, but yeah, more outsourced in that sense. Uh, Arthro Therapeutics, which does uh, um, software, or not, maybe not software, but like service for finding out if, if you're having problems, uh, like medical problems in, in with, arth what is it called? Arthritis, Arthritis yes. And Billmate, which is a pay solution for fin so a fintech startup payment solution, mostly used in e-commerce. Churchdesk, uh, which is, uh, as the name says, uh, uh, as a software or management tool for churches. Apparently, a lot of churches in the world, uh, so it's going very well for them. Apparently, not that many we do, which do IT solutions for churches. Uh, Coinify, a Bitcoin-based uh, startup. Uh, Corti, which is an AI startup, which does like really niche um, vo voice recognition, voice, rec voice analyzing, um, especially within like emergency calls. So like if you, if you do an emergency call, they can try to get as much information from that call as possible by analyzing uh, what's said or what noises are there and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of early, but they're really interesting in, uh, in what they're doing and how, how they do it. Uh, Dunker Republic, which is kind of an uh, Airbnb for bicycles, so uh, being able to like rent bicycles or uh, uh, rent out your bicycle to, to others using your mobile phone as, as a key. Uh, that's not surprisingly Copenhagen based, but yeah. Uh, we have a company called Easy Size, which is a, a solution for e-commerce platform with fashion e-commerce to get um, less um, uh, less returns on orders from customers because that's a big problem within the fashion e-commerce. Uh, Evalent, which does um, e-commerce platform in that sense, Malmö based here. Uh, Family, which does uh, um, a management planning uh, tool for uh, uh, for family. I think uh, like I don't know if it's also elder care and stuff like that, but like uh, for sh for making like for making your family life go around or what do you say. And Fieldly is a construction service, so it's like a digital tool for the construction industry. Graduate land is used by almost all of the universities, especially in the Nordics and a lot of others, uh, regarding uh, uh, how to find the, uh, like the, the, their job portal. So if you go to, for example, Malmö Högskola's uh, uh, job portal, it's probably Graduate Land, which runs that. If you go to uh, CBS job portal, it's Graduate Land, which runs that. So they like, have the technology to run job portals for universities mostly. Icon Finder, which is, uh, as the name says, a place where you can find icons. So it's a marketplace for designers to list their icons and for uh, designers to buy other, other icons. It's been, been around for a while and really successful in, in a sense that they have a lot of a good community around them. Uh, Linkfire, which is like a, a tool to get more, um, oh, that's good, how do you explain Linkfire? Linkfire is kind of a, a web, like, you know, like Bitly, so it's, a, it's like a link service for music mostly. Uh, so like if you want to find out a song, you can go to Linkfire and it will, it, will, it will give you where the music is, regardless if it's on Spotify or Apple Music or where you have it. So it's like a way to share music without, being, without uh, no, needing to know what, on what service do I find this music. Because that's a problem which, which is nowadays that different, not all services have all music. Labster, which is like technology for, for a virtual lab, so they aim mostly at um, yeah, education, but instead of doing real chemistry in a lab, you, you do it virtually, uh, which is of course a lot cheaper uh, to do. So you can do it a lot more. Um, Minut, which, is, uh, which has a hardware, uh, the Point hardware, which is a smart home alarm, which they've done, they do other, other hardware related stuff as well. 
Mionix, which does uh, smart mouse, a bio bio sensor gaming mouse. So it's very popular gaming uh, hardware. Modcam, which does uh, uh, optics or which does camera hardware and technology re re regarding regarding that. Notified, which is uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Omvärlds analys. Yeah, uh, social media and like, how do you work with uh, information from social media for companies in one, in different ways? Uh, Order YoYo, which is also a very interesting startup. It's kind of a white label solution for restaurants, so it's a little bit like online pizza and uh, uh, other th those services, but it's like white label. So the restaurant gets their own app which they can use, uh, and and so that's it's their customer instead of being like the aggregators' customers. Uh, Pinme2, which is a service for larger companies which have a lot of location-based th things like es Espresso House or other things, or other chains which have a lot of different locations and they need to manage their social media on location-based, uh, uh, yeah, on, on each location. So that's a technology or a, a software to do that. Qubit, which is a technology to uh, create queue systems online, which is used for like ticket sales and stuff like that. So, like if you have a lot of, if you if you're if you're expecting to have a high load on your website, you can use the, their technology to uh, kind of build a queue system so that uh, your website doesn't o doesn't overload. Uh, Relink is also new. I I, haven't, I don't don't remember what they did. Crap, what did they do? Ah, yeah, they did uh, AI for. Um, uh, linking jobs and uh, like app, job application AI, so like smart job matching, sounds really fancy. Uh, I, I've, I they haven't met them before, so I don't know exactly what they're doing, but it sounds very very fancy. Um, and the last ones here, sensitive, uh, which is a hardware for. Uh, uh, it's currently it's a hardware for windows, so like a sensor for making sure if a window or a door is open, which, which is a lot easier and cheaper than the usual sensors, so that gives it a lot of new opportunities. For example, you could, you could for example, put it on a fridge and find out if your fridge is open or not, which you don't usually do. Uh, but gen in general, moving in the IoT sector for the smart, smart home. Simply Day, which uh, aims to be a better calendar, to make a calendar application good. Simple site, which is a, um, a, a, it's been around for a long time. So this is like one of those companies where it's like, how successful are they as a startup? They're very successful. They're, they have a lot of revenue. They do very. There are a lot of people working there. Uh, they could probably be a, a, a higher up on the list, or if, not, you know, not really higher up, but they're like they're probably bigger than a lot of the other companies here. But they haven't raised that much money because they don't have. They haven't taken the startup journey in that sense. They've been profitable and they have a lot of users. So they do web ser websites. Like you can sign up there. It's fairly cheap, and you can very easily do a website. Very, very simple service aimed at smaller companies mostly. Smart Refill, which does like smart banking and uh, uh, mobile, mobile solutions for banks or for mobile operators. So also these kind of uh, deep business to business things. And here is very interesting. We have Spiri. Uh, Spiri is an uh, electrical car uh, or a, a new way to do cars. And we have Unity, which is a new way to do cars. Uh, so we have two new car companies which have emerged uh, in the recent years, uh, one in Copenhagen and one in Lund. Uh, so that will be really interesting to see how it goes with them. They're very, they have different approaches, but both of them are kind of focused on rethinking the car. Like, why do we actually have a car? How does a car actually look? Uh, how do we use a car? So it's like using technology and that, the, in, that, that, that like society has changed as some kind of base for how, how we should do cars. And then the last one here on the list is uh, Templify. Uh, probably wrong, should probably be there. Yeah, doesn't matter. And um, Templify is uh, temp templates for, uh, um, for, for Microsoft Office and stuff like that. Because in large corporates, it's a big problem that you have, need to have a lot of different like, guidelines you need to follow. And uh, they have an easy solution to make it sure that you actually follow all your company guidelines when you do your, when you do your documents or your Excel sheets and stuff like that. So that's, uh, that's big enough to make your own company. Uh, profitable, quite uh, uh, on that. So that's 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 th that is the list. So, okay. The last couple of minutes, I'll talk about some other things. So one of the things I want to talk about is that 
I've done this talk. I've done the once a year the last couple of years. So it's interesting to see some changes. What like what's what's the conclusions? All of this. And one of the things which is fairly new for this year is that there have been a lot of uh, what you call exits. And so in the startup world, an exit is when you when you stop being a startup, when you are acquired, or when you do a, a listing on a stock exchange or something like that. Like if if you if something which doesn't mean you go bankrupt, that's a, an exit. And then how good an exit is, that depends on how good your journey has been. An exit can be okay if it's more or less that you get acquired by a company to, uh, which are mostly interested in your talent, for example. But it can be really good if, it's at, if you're acquired by somebody else who is really interested in your technology. Or if you do a stock, list, uh, a stock exchange listing and a lot the, the public is very interested in what you're doing. So how good they are, that's a little bit harder to know. But I just want to give some uh, of the exits, which has been the recent, recent year or less. So Bounty, uh, just fairly recently, was acquired by Northeast Ventures. Uh, we have uh, Crunchfish, which listed on the stock exchange. Uh, we have Fluke Stolen, which was acquired by uh, uh, Trip, Most Trip Monster. We have uh, uh, Auto Butler, which was acquired by PSA Group, a big European car maker, one of the biggest. Um, we have uh, Game Analytics, which was acquired by Mob Vista. Uh, we have the iTribe, which was uh, uh, um, acquired by Facebook or Oculus, which have a, which own Facebook, uh, which own uh, which are owned by Facebook. Uh, we have Flutter, which was acquired by um, um, Ad AdBlocker Plus, uh, and we have uh, BeepSend, which was acquired by Twilio, and we have uh, uh, Mistbase, which was acquired by RM. So all of these are kind of, uh, kind of very interesting because it's in a lot of different fields. There's a, a lot of exits uh, recently which just haven't been there before in that sense. So there's a lot of international companies acquiring local companies in one way or another. And that's often very important from a startup perspective because what this does is it does multiple things. One thing it does is that it brings international companies' presence here. Sometimes it disappears after a while. So sometimes this makes an international company be here, acquire a company, and after one or two years they move that company to wherever they're lo located. So sometimes it's temporary, but a lot of times it's permanent or semi-permanent, as permanent as it can be, like 10 years or 20 years. So that you actually have an office here from a company which has not been here before. That's very good for, for the region, for the ecosystem in general. What an exit also does is that it often frees up money so the founders or early employees, which might have stocks in it, they get a quite a lot of money depending on how good the exit is, and they in their turn can invest that in other startups. So it kind of gets a chain roll or a snowball rolling of uh, investments which help other companies grow easier. And of course, this always depends on exactly how, what are the terms and how is it. Oh, quite often, the founders are locked in in the company for one or two years, where it's like you still need to work at the company. But also, you, you, can, you can have that extra money to actually do start to do investments in new companies. So just having a lot of exits during the recent year is probably very good for the startups, which have been one year old now and are raising money at this stage. So we'll have an effect of this in maybe five years. We'll have, we'll have a lot of effect from this happening now. So it's, it's kind of, it takes a while to, um, to see it, but it's very important, I think. But, but do, doing a startup isn't always easy, so there are also startups which don't exist anymore. Here's Startups which don't exist anymore is a lot harder to find, because if you do an exit, you, you have an interest in talking about it most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. So you quite often, you don't complain if anybody's writing about it. If you, f if you uh, fold your startup or if you go to bankruptcy, you're not that keen always on, on telling about it. So this is a little bit harder to find information. And not, not, all, not, not every time a startup folds, it really folds. It could be like, just like the company still exists, but nobody's working in the company any, anymore and everybody's doing something else. So how do you know? if the startup really isn't there anymore and stuff like that. So it kind of gets vague. But so here's just some examples. So we had um, this a, a year ago, actually. Um, so News Hubby, Alexandra there, uh, uh, said she would quit. We had FitBay, which filed for bankruptcy. Uh, we have Shipbeat, which also filed for, uh, for bankruptcy. And we have Brisk, which was one of the most famous uh, startups from the region because Hump is being, uh, as he is, a little bit everywhere, uh, being, being, it was his new startup after uh, the Astonishing Tribe. So we have companies which no longer exist, but as always, this isn't, all, this isn't necessarily bad because all the people behind these companies, they still exist. And they often have learned a lot from having failed. So you often have that experience and put it somewhere else. So for example, 
uh, Kenneth, which uh, did ship beat, he just was, uh, he joined, uh, who did he join? He just recently joined as a, a senior management in another, in another startup, which is having good traction. So like you see this, the, the, that the company doesn't exist isn't that bad because it's the knowledge, it's the talent, which is important for the region.